and Dad will come forward and put on her jacket. Pretty much inspired me um, my whole life. He's given me the 
how to of um, how to be a, a good and a good prevention. And then, of course, I want to say thank you to my friend Carla because she will go wherever, however, to get to where I am, and that is a sign of a true friend, and I really appreciate that. Gee, <laughs> not where it's supposed to be. So, I almost what I would say that um, I didn't have any idea about what my career was going to be like when I was when I enlisted. I think I thought of it as a job. I'm going to have a job, and I'm going to do my job. And however long that job lasts, um, it almost didn't go well. So when <laughs> when I was packing for basic training, of course I knew everything. And my dad, <laughs> my dad's in the army, and he's like, "Hey, bum, that's how he calls us. Like, hey, bum, I don't think you need all that. You know, I'm coming." From, and I was like, "Dad, I'm coming from overseas. Of course I need all this stuff. I had two suitcases, right?" Oh. So any of recruiter, if you've ever been a recruiter, you try to tell your people bring a bring a backpack. So I had two suitcases, and he was like, "Okay." So when I tell you they had a field day with me at basic training, okay, I was I was the hottest ticket in town. I, they attacked me. I they, you are not the princess. No. I just didn't think it was gonna go well. So, <laughs> From basic. <laughs> But it did go well, and I owe it all to the amazing people that I've had in my career. They say it takes a village to raise a child, and I was a child, and the Air Force village raised me, right? So I, I didn't want to make this like a retirement speech because I'm not retiring. <laughs> I signed my life away three uh, last month. <laughs> so it's not that. But I just want to just say thank you, and I want to be able to just say it out loud, thank you to all the people that um, helped in developing me as a person. Whew. So, at Lincoln Heath, so I started at Maxwell, right? I was, gosh, I thought I knew everything for sure. I mean, I was, um, I remember one of my, uh, one, of, one of the guys there, uh, Chief, I mean, uh, Sergeant Brass, he, I remember him calling me senior chief because I thought I knew everything. He was like, oh, so you're a senior airman, but you're acting like you're a chief. Somewhere. And I was like, yeah. No, I was not. <laughs> so, um, yes, I, I got to Lake and Heath, and my mentor, uh, Senior Master Sergeant Newton, he was like a father away from home. And he took me under his wing. He mentored me. He broke me down. I cried so many times because he would, he would cut me. You know, he'd be like, look, no, that's not how it goes. You know, just do the right thing. And he, talk, he taught me about um, integrity and doing the right thing the, the first time. Um, and in that time, I was with um, Chief Retired Kendrick, and he was like a model to go by because he, he was my supervisor. And then after we, he left, he just flourished. He progressed so quickly. He was master, senior, chief so quick. And he always checked in with me to see how I was doing <coughs> and checked on me, which was big for me. You know, it's like, these are people that I want to keep near and dear. Excellence, right? So, so England happened, and then I um, cross-trained into ENT, and then I went to Nellis, and I spent nine years at Nellis. Some of that was spent fighting for my rights, okay? <laughs> Justice and all I did, right? Um, you can get lost at Nellis. Um, you can, you know, it's easy to get in a clinic and just be a technician and do your job and go home. But I wanted to fight for to do better. I want to do better for airmen. I want to do better for my career field. I was like he said, I was the ENT consultant, and I thought I had all this, you know, power. Really, <laughs> uh, but uh, but I wanted to make a change. And so um, when I did go over to the wing, I kind of stole that that job. Uh, I was supposed to give that ad to my coworker, and she was she had already tried out for like a couple things, and I was like, I'm gonna go for this job, and I applied, and I got it, and. At the wing, it was a different world. It was different because they are a different breed. They have a different culture. They do things differently. And I just learned so much. And Chief Robinson retired. He was, he also checked me. He did. He was like, you don't be selfish. Don't be selfish in the things that you do. Do for your people. And I took all that. And I thank God that I had those people in my life to get me to where I am. Um, went back to the group. I had uh, Dr. Ayala. He was a perfectionist. 
he was amazing. I loved working under him, even though people didn't like working with him because he was a micromanager. Uh, I, I liked it. <laughs> um, I had uh, Senior Master Sergeant LeClaire, who was the uh, squadron superintendent. He pulled me into everything. He pulled me into top three. I put on all kinds of events. I did things with him. He, he just pulled me along, and he was amazing. Um, so then, it really, I, I think it really should. Jackson. Oh, he's good. 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 We went through some things, and we I think when you go through stuff with people, you, you, you become tighter. And those guys really, um, really mentored me and kept me going, and I just always knew, whatever. It's not, and it's like um, Chief High School, she always says this, she's like, it's not where you are, it's who you're with. And it's so true, because if, if I wasn't with them, I don't know if I would be here, you know? So um, then we all decided to come on down to San Antonio. <laughs> all of us and um we're here and i was embraced i mean the 959 current page i couldn't say thank you enough for allowing me to spread my wings and do the things i need to do as a career field manager um you guys you know saw it you, you know even if it you know we had some some words <laughs> but but you understood what that meant you understood what that meant and um colonel zay for allowing me to come there and squat in your building and when i say they embraced me I go to everything. I do everything with SG. Like, I'm there. And I, I try to put a patch on, and Colonel Chief High School was like, no, you can't wear that patch. You know, like, wherever I go, I think I, I belong there. And, um, but, but honest to goodness, I, I have had the best people placed in my life. And I couldn't be more grateful for what I've, what I've gotten. And I want to give that back. I want to give that back. So the three years that I'm bound to, <laughs> I'm going to, I want to give that back to the airmen. So now it's not about me. You know, it's not about am I checking boxes. It's about can I help others to check those boxes. Um, so, of course, the most important people in my life are my kids, right? So my kids, I do everything for them, right? Everything I do is for them. So... They're not bound by the UCMJ, by the way, right? <laughs> they test my inner gangster every day. Okay? And I can't give them LOCs and LORs. <laughs> They're just there testing it at all times. But it doesn't matter because I love them and I do go the ends of the earth for them. And I um, also want to thank my um, Jackson's dad, Eric, for coming. I appreciate it. You've been a rock. Um, but... I just want to say, you know, I think we people usually close in a quote, and I have a quote, and I hope everybody gets this, and I hope you know who I'm referencing, um, but it's from the great Drake. <laughs> I started from the bottom. <laughs> oh my God.
ceremony and sharing this moment with Chief Caldwell and her family. Have a wonderful day.